We're going to start off with the Iman controversy from the Olympics. She is a boxer who won her match and people are now upset about it because they don't understand science slash don't understand gender slash don't understand anything. And so here we are having a very important conversation about why we need to break gender expectations and stereotypes. Because even when we're dealing with cis women, transphobes think they have a place to speak. And worse than that, women, TERFs like JK Rowling, end up beating on women, bullying women that they claim to be on the side of because they don't know the difference between a cis woman and a trans woman and the boogeyman that they're fighting in their nightmares. Obviously, we're pro-LGBT here. Any transphobia in the comment section will be deleted by my mods. Guys, if there's any transphobia, you can delete it. You can give people opportunities to have some sort of discourse and nuance. But the nuance here is that people don't know a cis woman when they see one. And because of that, their transphobia and their misogyny leaks out and suffocates the rest of us. With peace and love, you do not know what you're talking about. It's like the same people who think Kamala Harris is neither black nor Indian or rather Indian than black. Are you that dense. Are you so uneducated at this point? And I know you're not. I know perfectly decent people that are mi that are parroting this idea that Kamala isn't black. What are you doing? Please be serious. I'm not going to engage with people that don't understand Kamala is black as well as Indian. I'm not going to talk to people that are religious who have the audacity to tell trans people what's real or not when you literally believe in a God. At least the trans person is standing right in front of us. What can you say about your God? Where is he? Because I've never met him. You've never even seen him. At least you can say I see a trans person, they're right in front of me. We're gonna go ahead and let Philip DeFranco tell you the story, but I also have the Olympics official messaging and then we'll have a conversation about it because it is incredibly frustrating, I think, to look at the world. And I know humans are gonna human, we can let it go. You don't have to let this eat you up. But when people sit there and say they're intelligent, when people sit there and say, I know what I'm talking about, and then you literally do not know or have any clue what you're speaking about, it is very frustrating. <laughs> Yo, we gotta talk about this Aman, Khalif, Angela, Karini gender controversy and scandal at the Olympics and the culture war that is ignited. Especially because every social media platform is just flooded with opinions and claims. Which suggests today these two had a first round boxing matchup. Khalif's representing Algeria, Karini's representing Italy. They start exchanging blows. At one point, Khalif strikes Karini so hard that her headgear appears to come loose. And after only 46 seconds in the ring, Karini forfeits, falling to her knees in tears. Right? And so Khalif gets declared the winner, and Karini saying, after Afterward, with a noticeably bruised face, I have never been hit so hard in my life. And adding, I felt a severe pain in my nose and with the maturity of a boxer, I said enough because I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I couldn't finish the match. I had to preserve my life. And also with that, noting two things. One, that she was not trying to make any sort of political statement by quitting. And two, that she's not qualified to decide whether Khalif should be allowed to compete. In fact, Okay, first things first, I just want to stop it here. She looks distraught, and I think she has the right to feel like this is the hardest I've ever been hit. This was pretty intense. Also, slightly a compliment to Iman. If you look at these two women in contrast to one another, right? You might say they both look like men. You might say they both look like women. You know, they both look like people. And the fact that by looking at them alone, you don't know if they're men or women is kind of the point. You guys know, I think we should sort of deconstruct gender expectation. Because I think, again, you don't want to live in a world where people can look at two different pictures and not be sure of what they're looking at. And then because of fear, attack somebody. Both of these people look like women. And in some other bubble, I'm sure you could look at them and think, maybe they could both be men. Or they could just both be something, whatever. Like, there's so much that goes into this. And either way, I accept them for whatever they're telling me they are because I don't I don't need to do anything else about it. There is a lack of humanity in this story, regardless if this person, Iman, is a woman or a man or a non-binary person. There is a lack of humanity in the way that the story is being covered. Everyone says they're standing up for women. They don't want women to get beaten up by men. Oh, yeah? That's funny you say that because you're still friends with all your best friends. You say that, but you're still friends with a lot of men that are out here doing a lot of horrible thing to women. You're voting for a president who literally has a civil case against him for assault. So don't talk to me about, oh, you want to protect women, then don't vote for Trump. Oh, I want to protect women. Okay, then don't vote anti-pro-abortion. Oh, I want to protect women. Do you? Funny how you want to protect women when it uh, aligns with transphobia. Statement by quitting and 
Two, that she's not qualified to decide whether Khalif should be allowed to compete. In fact, even saying she wants Khalif to keep going until the end. And if you haven't been online at all and you haven't seen the situation, at this point you might be thinking, Phil, why are politics even relevant here? Well, it's because there's been reporting that Khalif has male XY chromosomes, right? With the insinuation being, or some people outright saying, that she's trans. And actually, if you look into this, all this began during last year's Boxing World Championships when Khalif was disqualified after having high levels of testosterone. With the president of the International Boxing Association saying at the time, Based on DNA tests, we identified a number of athletes who tried to trick their colleagues into posing as women. According to the results of the test, it was proved that they have XY chromosomes. Such athletes were excluded from competition. However, both Khalif and the Algerian Olympic Committee denied that claim, and you also had the International Olympic Committee later clearing her to compete in the Paris Games, with its chief spokesman asserting that neither Khalif nor another Taiwanese Olympian who failed a sex test are trans. With the IOC even putting out a statement today clarifying that it bases the age and gender of all Olympic boxing competitions on athletes' passports. And on that note, Khalif's passport says she's female, which is important because Algeria doesn't recognize transgender citizens. And this is important. They don't even recognize trans people, right? So she's competing on behalf of a country that already doesn't recognize trans people, but is here to represent her country as a woman. If you're not going to trust your institutions to do their due diligence, then you've got to have the data for why. Yes, all of us can point to an institution that has done very horrible things and has faults. But at this point, too many things, too many, she has had to hop through so many hoops to get to where she is. At this point, what more would you want this person to do? Would you like to do a physical test on her? Do we need to have her get on screen in front of all of the, you know, global population just to prove what is wrong with you? It's like they don't even understand how disgusting this conversation is. They, well, you need to her to prove what to you. She already proved through the committee. It's on her passport. Why are you being gross? And you're being gross because you're disgusting people. You're disgusting people. They wouldn't allow her to change her gender on her passport even if she wanted to. Right? It's one of those countries where even homosexual acts are illegal. But despite that, you have people throwing around the hashtag I stand with Angela Kareen. With folks like J.K. Rowling criticize the match in the days leading up to it, and then after it happened, sharing a pic of Karini crying and saying, could any picture sum up our new men's right movement better? The smirk of a male who knows he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment, enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head. Logan Paul owes it. Whoa, whoa, look at that, look at that. J.K. Rowling literally said, could you sum up, a, could any picture sum up a new man's rights movement better? The smirk of a male who knows he's protected by misogynist sporting establishments. Girl, sit down, girl. These are the same people who say they're fighting for women. I mean, she's literally a turf, trans exclusionary radical feminist, and she can't even identify a woman while looking at her. You all say, all the transphobes, all the people who go, gender's obvious. Yes, I know a man or a woman when I look at them. And yet I could be wrong. That's like the irony. Yes, I know what you mean. I'll be very, I'll be very, okay, open-minded. I know what you mean. When I see someone, I usually know man or woman, but I can look at someone and know if they're a man or woman, even when they're trans. And the dilemma is that when people say that, they mean it to say, except for the trans people. They mean, I can tell that's a man. I can tell, not always, obviously. When I say it, I'm saying, well, well including non-binary people too. Like I'll meet people, and I'm like, hey, just checking on pronouns because I'm getting they, them vibes. And they're like, yeah, I am a they, them. I'm like, cool. That's not what these people are saying when they say, I know what a man or a woman looks like. They're claiming something that is not true. And JK Rowling just proved it. How can you not look at her and know? Because you don't always know by looking at people what their gender is. Good job, JK Rowling. Protected by a misogynist sporting establishment, enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head. Logan Paul also taking to Twitter and describing it as the purest form of evil unfolding right before your Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. This is the pure, purest form of evil from Logan Paul, the scammer. Logan Paul, the e most evil form unfolding right before your eyes is a woman boxing a woman at the, at the Olympics because you don't know what a woman is when you look at her. Good job, Logan Paul. Also, who the cares what Logan Paul thinks? Who cares what JK Rowling thinks? It's like we're taking the dumbest part of the human population when it comes to anything outside of making money. And we're like, hey, do you want to comment on this? No, I do not care what these people care. Like we have, we don't need these people's opinions. We have the government of Algeria and then we literally have the Olympics organization. That's who we should be getting the info from. Rise. With that saying, a man was allowed to beat up a woman on a global stage, crushing her life's dream while fighting for her deceased father. Elon Musk responding to a post saying men don't belong in women's sports 
absolutely. And similarly, resharing a post with a clip of the punch saying Kamala Harris supports this vote. A Kamala Harris does support women being Olympians and winning matches, which is why we're all voting for Kamala Harris. Guys, register to vote. Let's do this. Accordingly. But then with all that, you've also seen a lot of people saying those people are just sharing misinformation. They're right? saying Khalif is not a man, has never been a man. She's not transgender. She was born a cis woman. But with that saying she might have one of a group of rare conditions known as DSDs or differences of sex development. Right? Some people with DSDs, they're raised as female, but they have XY sex chromosomes and blood testosterone levels in the male range. Which is why with that, you had people saying it's perfectly possible to talk about what the eligibility criteria should be for sports and especially combat sports without cruelly monstering someone with an intersex condition as a violent male. And others are arguing Aman Khalif is not this like overpowered monster. Then pointing to how she was defeated in a fight in the last Olympics and adding, everyone tweeting now about how Khalif is really a man beating up a woman in the ring, she isn't, has likely never watched a moment of women's boxing in their lives. And I wanna stress, while all of this is playing out, we really don't know what her situation is because her medical records have never been made public. But with all that said, we're gonna have to see how all this plays out as it's just continuing to grow right now. And it's definitely one of the biggest gender controversies in the Olympics ever. And currently, unless something changes, it looks like Khalif will be facing off against her next opponent on Saturday. So in the meantime, while we keep our eyes on this, I gotta ask, what are your thoughts here? Okay, this is important. <laughs> okay, because. A lot of the women over the last few years who have been called out and even excluded because of the way that they were born unique to themselves are women, cis women. You know, we're pro-trans here, but for the sake of this conversation, when we're talking about transphobia and we're talking about like cis communities that are very transphobic, even they themselves discriminate against cis women because they're afraid of women who are different, right? This is a picture of her as a kid. She looks like a normal child. They're just taking away all of her accomplishments growing up because what, her nose is big? And all of the women who have come before her are brown. They're not white. They're not dainty and blonde. They look more masculine, which is by the way, allowed as a woman. You are allowed to be a masculine woman and still be a woman, regardless of how people feel about what women should look like. Masculine women, are women. And so it is frustrating for me to see this attitude in a world that says they're fighting for women. Oh, but only women that what fit your beauty standard. Okay. So now this is from guardian sport, but this is from the Olympics. Okay. This is their official statement. Basically. The testosterone is not a perfect test. Mm. Many women can have testosterone, which is in what would be called male levels. Um, and, and still be women and still compete as women. So this panacea, this idea that suddenly you test, do one test for testosterone and that's also everything out, not the case, I'm afraid. Uh, but each sport needs to, do, needs to deal with its issues. They know their sports and their disciplines the best and, and you need to target uh, and tailor, I should say, uh, the testing and so on with that. But I think we're all agreed, I hope we're all agreed that we're not calling for people to go back to to the bad old days of sex testing, I think, uh, mm. w which which was a, you know, a terrible, terrible thing to do. And I'm sure we all agree that that is not the way forward uh, in this situation. This involves uh, real people. She literally looks like so many women I know. I mean, don't, don't, doesn't she kind of look like me? Are we like sisters? I mean, I feel like we even kind of look like each other. I mean, I feel like we kind of, you know what I mean? We both have big noses. I don't know. Like, she just looks like, I don't know. But then again, I'm a woman who people often misgender. So I get it. Like people are, you know, that's like one of the insults, but they've just never seen an Assyrian woman. Like it's like you never see you, if it, this woman isn't European. It's like you don't know she's a woman. It's like Jesus Christ. Come on. Like, I get it. I get it. You're so Eurocentric. Everything's just so centered around the white aesthetic. I get it. I fucking get it. But the world doesn't just look like one thing. The world is diverse. People look different. Women look different everywhere. Men look different everywhere. This is what women look like, okay? This is a woman. This is what women can look like. And we're talking about real people's lives here. Mm. They have competed. We're talking about real people's lives here, he said, which is such, that's the humanity of it. We are talking about real people's lives. Guys, this is a real person with a real family and real goals like the rest of us. And whether she was trans or cis doesn't take away her humanity. But the fact that she's a cis woman, you know this hurts. You know it hurts whether you're trans or cis. But you know she's probably heard this her whole life from people who don't grow up around her. Right? Because, of course, my family 
is used to women who look like me. So they would never think I look like a man. But you go outside of that bubble and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, are you a man? You have a big nose. Are you a man? Look, I am a man. But you wouldn't even understand that perspective either. You have no idea what you're looking at. And it would do you and the world so much better if you would just ask yourself, maybe I could be wrong. And I wish everybody who wrote out those tweets has deleted them. But last I checked on JK Rowling, the tweet was still up. And they continue to compete in the women's competition. They have lost and they have won against other women uh, throughout over the years. Um, and, and by the way, this isn't, should make this absolutely clear for everyone, this is not a transgender issue. I know you know that. But I think there has been some misreporting on this. And I think it's very, very important to say that this is not a transgender issue. These mm -hmm. women have been competing in competitions for many years. Hold on. Chad says Algeria media did bully her before. Well, they suck too. All right. They're also anti-gay and anti-trans. So I'm not a big fan of them either right now. Okay. At the end of the day, there's a humanity perspective to this that everyone is denying. Regardless of the kind of human you are, you are still a human. Regardless of the kind of human you are, trans, cis, black, white, masculine, feminine, you're still a human. Do we care about human life? Apparently not. But I never thought people did anyways, by the way y'all act on a daily basis. You just pretend to, or you only like the human life that apparently looks the way you approve of. Now everyone's saying she might have high T or have a uniqueness about her. Everybody does. And if you want to start disqualifying people for those reasons, redo the whole thing. Fine. People were using common examples like Michael Phelps wingspan and Hussein Bolt has like something unique about him. Everybody has something unique about them. That's probably why they excel to some extent. Look, I'm not a big fan of sports because I'm too gay for this stuff. But also the reason I don't like sports is it's a group activity with a bunch of people with a lot of opinions. I don't like group activities. Either redo the system or whatever. Keep it the same but you don't have to dehumanize somebody in the process just because you're uncomfortable. You don't have to attack this person and drag her because you're the one who's uncomfortable. Ridiculous. Also, Kamala Harris did get the official nomination for the Democratic Party. She will be our candidate in the fall. And I do recommend that you register to vote because you did not just fall out of a coconut tree. You exist within the context of everything that came before you, as does this woman, okay? Let's see, I'm on JK Rowling's Twitter just to see if she did delete the tweet. Okay, so here it is. Could all, could any picture sum up uh, a new man's right movement better? August 1st, still up, 400,000 likes, 100,000 retweets, and 44,000 comments. Still up on J.K. Rowling's Twitter. So much for caring about women. J.K. Rowling says a young female boxer has just had everything she's worked for and trained for snatched away because you allowed a male to get in the ring with her. You're a disgrace. Your safeguarding is a joke. Paris 24 will forever be tarnished by the brutal injustice done to Karini. Just because you don't know what a woman looks like, JK Rowling, doesn't mean you're correct. When I say like everyone lives in bubbles, how is this not a perfect example of a bubble? Hmm? You're living in this bubble. This is all you see. And that's it. This is all it is. And you're like, yep, I get it. I see the whole picture. It's bro. There is a whole picture that you are missing. An opportunity to humanize so many people. And you're so afraid. J.K. Rowling's a great example of fear, huh? She lives in the fear. And fear is the root of all evil. Her fear, because I used to be a big J.K. Rowling fan, not just Harry Potter. Guys, I used to love J.K. Rowling. There was a documentary about her life. You could watch at the end of the Harry Potter sixth movie, I think. And I used to watch it on repeat because I would love the idea of this woman who overcame. She wrote this amazing series. She's a survivor of domestic abuse. She did so many amazing things. But it's when they get paranoid, like Jordan Peterson, JK Rowling and Jordan Peterson, greats who became insane from their paranoia. And the paranoia is the issue. Go to therapy. You're a grown up. You're literally like 60 years old. Go to therapy. Ask yourself, what am I doing? Meditate, go to the mountains, hire a monk, talk to a priest, do something, smoke a joint, do something to calm yourself down. You are so afraid you're, become a, you're becoming a monster. You know, the irony of Peterson is Peterson is so terrified of being a Nazi that instead he's decided to be a transphobe. Well, it's kind of like being a Nazi since they were transphobic, like, what are you doing? You're so afraid of becoming this thing that you become this thing. It's like the irony. If you are so afraid of something, you will become it because the burden that you're putting on yourself is masking and blocking you from your wisdom. 
You must be wise. If you give into your fear, where is the wisdom? Give me an example of a person who is wise and drowning in their own fear. (sighs) And regardless, if later on this person ends up being anything else, right? It doesn't justify the way you're dehumanizing them. Stop dehumanizing people because you don't understand what you're looking at. Okay. With that said, any thoughts on this story? Any opinions? Goober says sex sex testing is an Olympics started in Nazi Germany in 1938. It's a really fascinating story. Oh, interesting. I'll look into it. I didn't know that. Abby says, do you think it can be that they became, uh, become rich and powerful that become fearful? Do you think it can be that they became rich and powerful? They became fearful. Um, no, I think when you feel bullied and ostracized or abandoned, you become a child again. Now, this is me speaking completely full opinion, no educational background. I see it in Peterson and um, JK Rowling the most where they were abandoned by the people they thought they could trust, like their organizations, their communities. And because they were abandoned, they're reacting like a child who got kicked out of their favorite school group and they're becoming the villain. That was like their villain arc. And instead of just realizing like you guys don't share enough of the same values to have a cohesive symbiotic relationship with your community anymore, you're becoming really ugly. As an example, Dr. Kirkonda reviewed Dr. K, you know, uh, receiving a reprimand from his medical board. Dr. K's reaction, as Dr. Kirkonda pointed out, was to be calm and accepting and say, this is good. This is good. I want to make sure I'm doing what's right by the standard that we've set. So we've been cooperating with the board for the last two years. I actually think it has been an eye-opening, humbling, fair, and excellent process. This is why medical boards exist. Because when there is a problem, when I show up and say, hey, I'm here to help, is what I am doing harmful in some way, helpful in some way? Where is the line? I personally feel relieved that the board has gone through everything that we've done with a fine tooth comb. And they have placed no restrictions on my license, no probation, nothing like that. And furthermore, and more importantly, no restrictions on the work that we do here. Peterson, on the other hand, panicked freaked out. He claimed he would never let the indoctrination system get to him, that he wouldn't take their classes. He became ugly. For the life of me, I can't see how I'm wrong. I think I have a responsibility to say what I think, and I think many people agree with that, and I think the fundamental consequence of that around the world has been massively beneficial to people. So I think, I think, number one, what the hell, and number two, bring it on and see what happens, because I will make absolutely every bit of this public in a way that the college and the courts can hardly even imagine. There's an ugliness that comes out in people when they're afraid. And I see it in Jordan Peterson. I see it in JK Rowling. At the end of the day, people disagreeing with you isn't them abandoning you. It's them having a different opinion. And if you think the opinion is so wrong, then why? Use the data. Peterson will say, these parents who transition their children, they do it because they're these narcissistic mothers that are trying to control their children through their sex identities. Like he comes up with these like conspiracy theories about a select group of small parents that yes, sometimes happens, but isn't a majority of parents who help their kids like become in sync with their gender identity. I want to protect children as much as anyone else. And I want to protect athletes as much as anyone else. But we don't need to dehumanize people in order to protect people. You can humanize the bad. That's why I say you try to humanize your enemy. And how you treat your enemy tells me more about you than anything else. Because your enemy is just somebody who often just thinks differently from you. Not all of your enemies are people that are literally trying to hurt you. I just want people to recognize that while you're busy protecting people, you're maybe hurting people in the process. And I think we should learn to balance it out a little bit, huh?
Da 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 da